Chris from Mountain Shack Travels and today I thought we would um, just have a look at what we carry on our adventures. Um, quick look around the rig, how we've set it up. Um, now most of the stuff you see in here has been um, it's DIY stuff. Um, we've set it up ourselves and um, so relatively cheap. Um, apart from the canopy itself, um, every, most of the other stuff that's um, set up in the canopy um, we've built from scratch. So, <clears throat> let's have a look and see what we've got here and um, might give you guys a bit of um, ideas of how to set your rigs up and uh, what works for us, what doesn't work for us. So, um, this side, the galley side, our kitchen side. So, um, we have Engel fridge, um, 40, it's only a small one, 40, 45 litres, um, but it does the job for us and um, we've had it for a number of years. Prior to that, we were using another brand of fridge, um, which we had for many, many years before that, similar size. Um, it's just a matter of learning how to pack things into um, where you want to pack them into. And um, yeah, so anyway, fridge on a fridge slide. So it just pulls out fairly easily. So you can fish your um, food and stuff like that. The other side here, um, now, this setup here we've had since um, our early days. Um, basically when we first started, um, we've always had dual cab utes. Our first vehicle was a Holden Rodeo. So in the Rodeo, um, in the back of the tub section, um, I built, we built this um, for our kitchen side and it's been in use ever since. Uh, got moved from that into the back of the canopy. And um, so basically all we've got, um, this one's out of here. So you've got a shelf for a bit of storage. Um, we just keep our pots, um, cutlery, knives and forks, stuff in that. And then behind that we've got a Bee Gees Barbie. Um, we find the Bee Gees great. We've used Bee Gees for a number of years and they are fantastic. Um, don't need much wood to get your fire hot enough to cook on. But, um, and they pack into fairly tight spaces. Um, that's a large Bee Gees we've got in there, um, in behind all that. So, and it's easy to access, so. Um, second shelf is our stove, which just pulls out on our drawer. Um, just a two burner. And that way also, um, the idea of this setup initially was so that we could have quick camp setups. And also, if you pull up for lunch and we want to cook some lunch, all you gotta do is, all we need to do is pull this out, hook it up to our gas bottle, and we're off and cooking, way to go. So easy, simple, no um, time to set up, pack up, all that sort of stuff. Um, very quick, very easy, and um, that's the main reason we wanted to do this. So. Um, underneath the stove, we've got just got another drawer. Um, we just basically use this drawer for um, preparation, making sandwiches, cutting things, um, so you don't have to get a table out or set anything else up. You've got everything right here. You can work away and then goes back away. Nice, simple, easy. Locks in um, so it doesn't come out when you're driving. A um, couple of tent pegs we've used. And um, yeah, so anyway. Um, up above on top of this drawer system, um, we've got more. Now these are just plastic drawers um, available from Bunnings, um, any sort of hardware or um, even reject shop, places like that. So in here, um, we just have, it's, um, so it's organized with our cups, mugs, that sort of thing, um, tea bags, coffee, um, any spices, herb spices, that sort of stuff. Plates and bowls, and then just an assortment of um, plastic bags, stuff like that. So it just keeps them nice, neat and tidy, um, easily accessible. And because they're plastic, um, you're not adding much weight in, which um, is the other consideration. Um, beside the drawers, um, that's our washing up tub. Um, and inside the washing up tub, we just have a kettle um, which normally sits in there and you can sit other bits and pieces in there while you're traveling. Um, two boxes, plastic boxes behind that. Um, that's where we store most of our um, grocery type items when we're on the road. Um, keeps them in a lock up box and um, keeps them fairly dust free. Um, if you've got them out on a table, you don't have to worry about critters getting into them, stuff like that. So and then they come out back in 
um, really easily. So that's the um, kitchen side. Um, I'll just make quick mention of um, up in beside the fridge um, we have our water. Now we carry um, at this stage or at this moment um, we carry three jerry cans of water. Um, we initially had an 80 litre water tank mounted in there um, when we first bought the canopy but um, we had a few issues with it and a few leakage problems so we've gone back to having um, three jerry cans. We like the jerry can system. Um, may not be as easy as the um, water tanks but what we find with the jerry cans is if you do to bring a leak in one for some whatever reason you've still got another two it's not going to drain your entire water supply which um, is a big thing if you're out in the outback middle of nowhere uh, water is very scarce um, you have to conserve it at the best of times so um, we find the three jerry cans works quite well for us um, that's probably about it for the galley side uh, tucked up in the back of here um, you probably can't see on the camera there. There's a couple slots up here. Um, we've got plastic bags in one uh, for rubbish. Uh, below the plastic bags, we have um, our toilet rolls. And then um, up on the back wall, mounted on the back wall, um, is a, um, I guess you'd call it a kit with um, tongs, that sort of stuff. So your barbecue type utensils and they just hang on the wall um, back behind, tucked in there. So everything's tucked in, everything's got its place. Um, we find it works really well for us. Um, we've lived out of the back of here for months at a time and yeah, it's um, really easy set up. As I said, quick and easy to set up. Um, you're not mucking around with a lot of things when you pull up to camp. Okay, here we are on the other side of the canopy, the driver's side. Um, so this side is basically a storage side. Um, we've just set up again with easy setup drawer system um, that is easy to open and close, keeps everything in its place. You're not digging through things when you get to camp to try and find things. Um, so I'll just run through what we've got in here. Um, we carry extra stuff depending on where we're going, what trip it is, um, how remote we're going. Um, so at the minute in here, it's just basic stuff, um, but we can add extra stuff in as we need to. So um, I'll run through the drawers first off. So in the bottom drawer, um, we just basically latches in so it doesn't come out and in and out when you're driving along. Um, in here, we've just got our tin pegs, uh, mallet, that sort of thing. Stuff when you get to camp, you need to set up. Um, we run with a ship-shaped rooftop tent, so we don't always need uh, pegs. Um, the ship shape we've found and we've used it since we've basically started camping many, many years. Um, it's an easy setup to use. You don't need to get to camp, hammer pegs in. It's just a matter of pull up to camp, undo the straps up there, open it up. And the only time you need to um, hammer tent pegs in is if you want to have the awning out, if it's wet or you know you want a bit of shelter for some reason. Um, you can put the awning out and then you have tent poles, tent pegs to um, secure that in. But on a normal um, basis, if we're not using the canopy, um, we don't even need to access the um, pegs, anything like that. So, But they're there easily accessible if you need them. And it just does up like that. In the second drawer is our bits and pieces drawer. So in it, um, we just have a lot of um, sort of spare parts, bits and pieces. Um, fire lighters for our, if you want to get the campfire going. Um, yeah, all sorts of bits and pieces. Uh, spare batteries, um, our battery charger if we need to um, charge up the auxiliary battery when we're on a powered site somewhere, uh, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's just basically our bits and pieces drop. Now up the top, um, that drawer has basically got um, our pots, uh, well, basically our pots. So um, a couple cooking pots in there. So again, easily accessible, so you don't have to pull everything out if you want to grab some pots out to um, cook dinner. Um, this side is another, um, on our long trips, on our sort of, if we're going remote or somewhere that um, is, uh, you know, sort of difficult to access and we're away for quite a while. Um, 
we put all our emergency food supplies in that drawer and other bits and pieces as well. At the minute it's also got um, a billy, um, the billy we hang over the fire campfire and um, a few other little bits and pieces but it just keeps it all nice, neat and tidy and um, up beside the drawers, I don't know if you can see there, um, is our um, air compressor. So again it's easy to pull out and um, if you know when we're airing up, airing down, um, you want that easily accessible so that um, you can grab it out quickly and um, do that sort of stuff. On top of the drawers are our um, camp chairs, so um, they stack up there. Um, and what else we got? Down in here, uh, first aid kit. It lives in here. Um, we might run through what we carry, certain pieces um, in a future video. Um, Sandra and I are both coming from a health and medical background. Um, we may carry more than what most people do in their first aid kits. Um, so we might run through that at some stage and um, show you just exactly what we do carry, why we carry it. And um, yeah, if you um, want some ideas on what to uh, put in your first aid kit for going remote, I mean, um, yeah, we might run through some of that stuff in a future video. Um, jump start. So we don't always carry the jump start, um, but We've found, um, we've only had about one instance over the years um, of doing this. Um, many, many years ago, before we had the jump start, uh, the vehicle wouldn't start um, on the uh, main battery or the auxiliary battery. So um, since then, um, we invested in a jump start and we've never had to use it, but um, we do carry it with us in case. Um, we do have a dual battery system in the car, but um, you don't know, you hope that doesn't fail, but as I said, we have had one fail in the past. So. Tucked up in the back corner here, um, we've got our shower and beside the shower um, a table, fold up table, so that's just sort of stuck in the back there. Um, what else have we got? Um, portable solar panels, solar blanket, so if we want to um, charge up when we get to um, camp or if we're staying somewhere, um, you know, if we're stationary somewhere for a couple of days then we'll get them out and um, charge up. Um, shower tent so if we're getting the shower out then we might want the shower tent a um, bit of privacy and that sort of thing um, they're just um, some matting so again for shower purposes to go under your shower up in you can't see on the um, video there um, tucked up in the top of the front um, of the canopy um, we have side curtains for the tent so as I said before um, tent folds out and the basic setup is um, we don't have any awnings out or anything like that. Um, we do have the option um, if it's wet, windy, um, want a lot more shelter. There are a couple side curtains that we can put up and um, give ourselves a lot more shelter over on the um, kitchen side, um, which we do use at times, just depends what the weather's doing and that sort of thing. And tucked up in right in the corner here, um, we've got a little shovel. Um, an axe and a handsaw. So um, if we need to chop up a bit of firewood along the way, um, clear some firewood from some tracks or something like that, then um, we've got a couple options of tools in there that we can use for that. Um, that's about it. The other uh, thing we've got on this side is the um, our inverter uh, for charging our electrical appliances, um, camera gear, that sort of thing. So um, we can plug it in here and um, it just sits in there while we're traveling and then it's all charged up ready to go when we get to where we're going to. Okay just um, running over what's on the back of the canopy um, we've got our second spare, the, another spare goes under the tray, um, rubbish bag of course, a um, couple of jerry cans, um, we don't always carry the jerry cans with us if we're going again going remote somewhere and we think we'll need extra fuel um, then we've got at least two we can carry. If we need more fuel than that, um, then we can put more on the refracts at the front, but um, most of the time the two gets us out of trouble. And our HF antenna. Um, we've been using HF uh, since we started. Um, we've never had to use it um, in an emergency, um, but it's good to know that it's there. Um, we might in a, another future video as well run through um, emergency communications, um, HF radios, satellite phones, what we recommend um, and that sort of thing and you know run through how you use a HF radio, how you use a satellite phone, that sort of thing. Um, but as I said, peace of mind, if you're going somewhere remote you really need to have at least 
a form of communication. Um, mobile phones won't work. Um, once you leave most towns, um, yeah, mobile phone's basically a um, paperweight. So you need another form of communication. So if something does go wrong, um, then you can get to the outside world. Um, if you're traveling in a group, then our sort of recommendation for that is that at least one of you in the group has some form of communication, whether it be a satellite phone, HF radio, EPIRB, um, all that sort of stuff. Because we travel, um, pretty much all the travel we do, um, we travel solo. So um, we've got a couple different um, communication options that we carry, uh, but as I said, we'll run through that in a different video and um, explain to you what they are and how we use them and um, it just gives you peace of mind out there that if something does go pear-shaped then um, you can get a message out to the to the outside world. Okay here we are at the front of the vehicle um, apart from the ship shape rooftop tent that we've got mounted onto the canopy at the back on the front we've just got a lightweight um, alloy rhino rack um, up in that we have our match tracks um, our long handled shovel and it still leaves us some room up there for other bits and pieces. Um, we do have storage cases at times we put up there. Um, we try to limit the stuff we put on the roof um, just to keep the centre of gravity down. So, But it does give us a bit of options there to um, carry some stuff that we don't want in the canopy um, up on the roof there. One thing I did not mention earlier, um, we'll just run over quickly. Um, each side of our, because we use a tray back ute, each side we have um, toolboxes. So this side toolbox um, is basically contains all our recovery gear and our tyre changing gear. So if we um, need to get a snatch strap out or something like that, we don't have to dig through anything. We can just flip this open, grab it out, go and use it. And if it's dirty, wet, muddy, you can just get chucked back in there and um, you're not dirty anything else in the vehicle. On the other side, um, similar to toolbox, um, it's all our spare tools. So um, all our toolkit, um, and that sort of thing lives on the other side. So thanks for watching and um, hopefully we'll um, run another video soon and um, show you guys a little bit more.